You first turn on the Speroni, you have to zero it. You turn it on and you get these blinking, flashing display. Then you gotta back it up and it finds the marks. And theoretically that should be good enough, but I also reset the zero. by lining up the image on the reference mark on the spindle here. Then I can go over here and set the zero point just to make sure that it's, it's properly zero. I previously squared this up a little bit I didn't want to waste too much time with the video and I have to get this job done in a hurry because I've got other stuff to do here so I face the ends of this piece square so we can just stick it in the vise here this is the what I call the riser piece we're gonna drill and tap the holes and put the dowel pin holes in the end of it first and then we're gonna get to the uh, the base piece and put the holes in it and then we have this ready so that we can attach it to it and mill the angle on it that you saw in the CAD drawing. So I'm snug it in the vise. I'm gonna tap it down with the dead blow hammer. Make sure it's uh, seated good. Here's the example of the Renishaw probing cycles. This one's gonna be to probe the X on the side of the part, which would be an A5 point. S one is the, um, well, let's go over this. A G65 is calling a macro. And this is the macro, the Renishaw Easy Set macro of P9023. S1 is a fixture offset one or G54. A5 point is probing in the X pot plus direction. And so that's gonna set the X zero point. And then we call it G5065 again macro call 9023 same macro s1 g54 a4 point is a is kind of like a web measurement over the outside of a web if you will and the, and the thickness of the part or the height of the part is 1.5 inches and it's going to go down z minus 0.5 incrementally to probe the sides so i have to have the tip of the probe at least less than a half an inch from the the top of the part so it'll catch the part when it goes down on each side of the part okay and then this one g65 is another macro call 9023 same macro s1 same fixture offset and a9 point is going straight down in z to probe the z offset so we're going to call uh, tool 80 which is the spindle probe into the arm I'm going to change the tool 80. Okay, and then we're going to put it in handle jog and we're going to get the probe in the appropriate position for the first probing point which is gonna, it's gonna be right over here, actually. So this should be the, setting the X zero right here. So I run the first macro in MDI. Sets the X zero. Get out here somewhere in the middle of the part, more or less in the in the middle up and down here, and closer 
uh, so I want it's going to move down a half an inch. So I want it to probe somewhere around here. So I got to have this closer than a half inch. And I run the next one. Okay, that sets the Y zero point in the center line of the part. Then one more to set the Z on the top. I've already faced the top, so we're not going to reface that, so we're going to set the Z zero right there at that point. We'll return the machine, and I'm, I usually, uh, because this probe doesn't, it'll, it'll be on continuously as long as it's in the spindle because that, that um, transmitter turns it on. You can see the, I don't know if you can see it, but the light is blinking. If I'm green right here, you can see this green light maybe. And it'll run the battery down if I leave it in the spindle too long. So I always change it out of the spindle as soon as I can right after doing it, a probing cycle, a manual probing cycle.
That puts these holes in there. See how this, uh, this doesn't have to fit real tight. Actually, it fits pretty good. I think I'll do the same on the other side. I was gonna press them in here, but I think I'll do it the same way. That reamer's cutting just right. It's like a nice slip fit on that dowel pin. So now, now that we got this, this is gonna actually go this way on here, like, with the holes here. So you gotta kinda of think of the order of operations here when you're doing this stuff. Like how do you want, um, how do you want this stuff to go? It's the reason I did this, this part first. So now I can drill the holes, drill the four holes that bolt it to the machine up here, which uh, I think are 5 16 cap screws and then we'll drill the and ream the for the dowel pin and the through holes for the two quarter inch quarter 20 screws which are going to be the these ones here and um, I think I've got the screws here yeah so they're going to go in here but they're going to come up from underneath here like that so we we'll drill those holes and then we'll flip this over and counter bore those two holes and I'm not going to cut that notch out yet because I want to I want to use that for fixed stream purposes. See, when we clamp, we're going to screw this to the plate and it's going to be in the vise like this, if you will. If, you, if this is the front of the vise and you're going to mill that angle on there. And then we're going to stick it in the vise horizontally and tip it at the angle like this so we can drill the holes for the, the clamp piece. And then we're going to put it all back together with the clamp on top, put it back in the vise this way, you know, clamping it uh, on here and, uh, and bore the hole for the grinding, uh, the grinding dresser deal. And at that time, we're going to mill that notch in there only at that time because we still want this long side to hold it when we're gonna when we're gonna hold it you know this way if you will and tip it at the angle in the in the B axis to mill this taper on this piece so we want the full width of the part up to that point. So you kinda gotta think of these things when you're when you're progressing in a job and how you're going to um, not get one thing ahead of itself and then then you can't then it's more difficult I mean it's not that you can't do it but it becomes more difficult if you kind of don't give it a little forethought I went ahead and milled this drilled the holes in the base plate and and uh, screwed the riser block on here I'm kind of in a getting in a little bit of hurry and it's taking quite a bit of time and I've got to get to this next job I've got going so I didn't think this would be too big a deal. I just put these holes, it's just drilling holes and uh, screwing the parts together. And now we're going to set this in the vise. And we're going to, let's see if I can find a, I thought I had a Sharpie here. Here. 
And then we're gonna we're gonna um, program this. And it kind of goes like this. If I could draw correctly, like that. Here's our setup here. So I can get a pretty good here. I'm not gonna worry about a few tents. See what it looks like up and down. Not too bad. Set the X zero there. Almost done with this part. All we got left to do is to cut this notch in here and, and a, a radius here. This is only cosmetic. Really, it doesn't even need to be there, except that I don't want to hit myself on a sharp corner when I'm because um, I got to turn that little knob to get it started. You know that that uh, dressing attachment. You kind of got to spin it to get it started. So. I think that's going to be it for this video, and um, thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you in the next video.